Okay, welcome back. In this module, we're gonna be talking about prospecting in the cold market. Now, this is something that I have done a lot over the years. In fact, uh, probably the first uh, few years in network marketing, once I had blown through my warm market, then I went into the cold market. Now, the company that I, I work with now, we, we um, really teach warm market. I, this is not something that I train my organization on now because we just, um, what we have found that works, what's created momentum for us is pretty much staying in the warm market, tap rooting. You know, you enroll someone and then you quickly get into their warm market, you get into their warm market, Market, and we have not yet really had a major need to go into the cold market, but every company does things differently. And um, I have had a lot of success in the cold market. And so I'm going to give you some of the strategies um, that I have used. And I'm going to give you a few keys and uh, just a few kind of, you know, uh, fundamentals, if you will. Number one, it is going to be a huge numbers game. One of the challenges that a lot of people have is they just expect a much higher percentage of people to say yes than actually do. And so they end up getting frustrated. They get let down. They think it doesn't work. And it does work. If you do enough of anything, it's going to work. But you're going to have to go through a lot more numbers in the cold market um, than you would in anything else. And so... Um, expect that. These are people who've, you know, answered an ad online or you've run an ad, uh, that maybe you've bought a lead list, something like that. And you just never know. With people you don't know, you never know what's going to happen. People are going to be rude. People are going to hang up on you. People may yell at you. People are going to lie to you. So just expect it and be okay with whatever happens. Just be okay. Listen, however it is that they are, whatever their opinion is, whatever they say to you, you cannot pay your bills based on the opinions of other people. And so whatever it is, just don't be emotionally attached. Don't take it personally and just realize you are going to have to work the numbers. Now, it is all about how you carry yourself. Success in the cold market comes way more from how you position yourself and how you speak rather than what you say. So I'm gonna give you some scripts that worked for me. They're scripts that I said over and over and over again and committed to memory. But when I got good, it wasn't necessarily because of the script, it was how I delivered the script, if that makes sense. So some keys here, you need to be confident. And here's the thing, and, and this is one of the things that I actually enjoyed about it because I was in my early 20s and uh, because I was willing to make thousands and thousands of calls, I ended up getting really good over the phone and they didn't know that I was 22 years old. They didn't know that I was 23 years old. They didn't know me. I could be whoever I wanted in my mind. And I'm not saying lie to anyone, don't lie to anyone, but from a posture standpoint, from a confidence standpoint, you can be whoever you wanna be. And you've gotta look at this like you are the president and CEO of your own business and you're interviewing them. See, you're not trying to sell your business to anyone out there. You are qualifying people. You're just looking for the one. See, you have the ability to disqualify people if they don't fit what you're looking for. And I'm going to encourage you to disqualify some people. I've disqualified several people over the phone and even in person. And see, here's why I want you, this is part of your homework, is go out and disqualify someone. Someone's you know, kind of rude with you or maybe they're just giving you objections that me, you know, obviously add up to the point to the fact that they just don't have the intelligence to be successful. Just disqualify them. Just say, "You know what, John? I think it's great that you've taken a look at this, but I really don't think it's for you." Thanks for your time, okay? And what happens is you go from being needy to all of a sudden you go to, you go to an abundance mentality and that happens when you disqualify people. So listen, you are the professional. You are the CEO of your own business and what a professional does is they sort. An amateur sells. So you are just looking for the right person. You're gonna have to sort through a lot of people to find the right person, but they are out there. So remember, you are in control. You're in control, not the prospect. So when you're calling someone back, 
first and foremost, you cannot sound like you're reading. So what the scripts that I'm going to give you, whatever scripts you follow, you want to read through those scripts over and over and over so it doesn't sound like you're reading, even though you may be. Now, what I would do, even though I had committed the script to memory, there was just a level of comfort when I had the script in front of me. It was like I, I just... Um, had more confidence when I could read through the script. Now, I didn't sound like I was reading. They didn't know I was reading, but it was right in front of me. And, you know, here's the thing, just to like drive this point home, if you've ever had a telemarketer call you and it was obvious that they were reading from a script, did you just immediately want to get off the phone? If you're anything like me, you couldn't wait to get off the phone. But have you ever had a telemarketer call you and they just seemed to instantly build rapport with you. It was like, you don't mind talking to them for some reason. And I'll tell you one of the biggest keys for this is just being familiar, okay? So when you're calling someone, you want to be familiar. You want to be cool. It's like you're calling your best friend. Hey, is John in? Hey, is John in? You know, instead of saying, hi, is John there, please? Uh, that's formal. You know, that's not familiar. Be familiar. Um, hey, is this John? <laughs> you know, you're not saying, uh, is John Smith there, please? Um, hi, is John Smith in? You know, don't give last names. Hey, is John in? Or, hey, is this John? So, no last names. Again, we are being familiar. And when you start off the call familiar, most people, they just feel more at ease. It's like, you know, most salespeople are amateurs. Most telemarketers are amateurs. And so they come across as being formal and it sets off the sales, you know, that sales radar, um, you know, initially it goes up. And so then they feel closed off. And so when you're familiar, then, you know, the warning doesn't go off as much. And here's Here's when I knew I was really good. It was actually a negative experience uh, somewhat, but this is when I knew I had gotten really good. I called a lady, and I don't remember her name. Maybe it was Sandra, and I just said, hey, is it Sandra? Hey, Sandra, it's Matt. Listen, I'm calling you back because you had responded to an ad, um, So you know, and I just went into it. And we just started talking, and she sounded a little bit confused. And... um all of a sudden she stopped me and she said, now, hold on a second. I don't even know who you are and you're talking to me like we've known each other for 20 years. <laughs> and she was almost like a little put off by that. And I just smiled. I said, you know, I just make friends easy. And, you know, she never joined my business. But it was after that call when I was like, wow, I got it. Like she was confused because she felt like we had known each other for a long time, even though we didn't. And so let's talk about calling leads back from a purchased list. Let's say you buy a list online or you buy a list from whoever. <laughs> Realize you're going to get really really low conversions. You are going to have to talk to a lot of people. You're going to get a lot of bad numbers. You're going to get a lot of hangups. Um, I'll also talk about self-generated leads. That's the only lead that I would ever call uh, anymore, but I will give you uh, some strategies on uh, you know, really covering both. And so let's say you've called a lead, and it's not a lead that you generated. It's a lead that maybe someone else, uh, you went to a lead generation company and they, they generated. And I'm going to give you an example of a script. I'd call someone back. I'd say, hey, this is Matt Morris calling from Dallas, giving you a quick call because you had recently requested information about starting a business from home. Is that still true? And... Um, I'm going to wait for the answer. If they say, yeah, that's true. Now, they may hang up on you. They may, you know, whatever it is, um, whatever it is they say. Now, a, a quick caveat to this, something that I used to do that I felt put me in a, a little bit more posture was I'd say you had requested information from one of my websites. You know, I'm kind of assuming that my partner, whoever I bought the uh, leads from, you know, that's my lead generation company. If you can say my website or my, um, my ad, my information, it puts you in a little bit of a stronger posture. And so someone says, yes, I'd say, okay, great. Now a good time to talk. Excellent. Well, tell me about yourself. What kind of work do you do? How long have you been doing that? Oh, excellent. Are you married? Do you have kids? 
Um, you know, so I'm just doing a little bit of rapport building. Now, some, sometimes in some cases when I've just wanted to plow through leads, I've skipped a lot of the rapport building. I just find that if I do a little bit of rapport building, then they tend to like me a little bit better. It creates the rapport and they're more likely to really take a serious look at it. And so I'm going to ask them, you know, are you married? Do you have kids? Um, tell me this, how much money, how much money are you looking to make? And then I might ask something like this, assuming you found a business that met your needs, how much extra time per week can you commit to building a business from home? And so again, I'm interviewing them. I'm asking them how much time they can commit to the business. Why am I asking that? Because if they can't commit the time, they may not be the person that I want. Now, I'm going to give you what for me was the most important question, by far the most important question, and it's this. Aside from the money, what is it you're really looking for? And just pause and wait. Sometimes there's going to be a bit of a silence because not a lot of people ask a question like this. So aside from just the money, what is it you're really looking for? And here's what I want. I want them to to go authentic with me. I want them to open up to me. And if they'll open up to me and tell me what they really want, then I know the, the chance of me enrolling that person goes through the roof because two things happen. Number one, if, if I get them to open up and share their why with me, when they actually look at the presentation video or listen to the conference call or get on the webinar, whatever it is, they're going to look at it with a different set of eyes than if I hadn't pulled out their why. And so you want to pull out the why first. So that's number one. Number two is you can use that to close them at the end. And so once they've been through it, if money is an issue, you can go back to what their why is. And you can say, you know what, John, you told me when we first started talking that what you really wanted was to be able to get out of the rat race, to you know, not have to work for a boss that makes your life hell. I mean, are you serious about that or were you just kidding around? And you can help people. You can be real with people, okay? Um, sometimes when you say, aside from the money, what is it you're really looking for? And they say, well, I just want more money. I mean, they're going to go back to the money. And, and here's my standard answer every time. I said, well, listen, money ends in a why. Why do you want the money? And, you know, if they won't answer that question, they're probably not a great prospect. And, you know, I, what I would do is if someone didn't feel comfortable answering that and say, John, listen, there's a really important reason why I asked this question is because I find that if people don't really have much of a motivation, they're just not going to be successful. And I have got a lot, a lot of people who have requested information. And I obviously want to work with the people who are have the best chance of success. And so let me ask you one last time, what is it you're really looking for? You know, and if they're not going to open up, that might be an opportunity to just disqualify them right there. Okay. Now, um, Here's once you've gone through that, then you take it to the next step. Well, based on what you told me, you sound like the type of person that I'd love to work with and someone who definitely has what it takes to be successful with our business model. Here's what we're going to do next. I need to get you some information so you can make an informed and educated decision on whether or not this is the right business model for you. Fair enough? Okay. And so I'm going to break that down. I'm breaking down the psychology behind this. And so I'm saying you're the type of person I'd love to work with. So I'm building a little bit of a bond between him and I or her and I. Um, and I'm giving myself a little bit of posture. I'm telling them, you know, you sound like someone who definitely has what it takes to be successful. Here's what we're going to do next. See, I am in control. I'm leading that person. Okay. And so it sounds insignificant, but when you say, here's what we're going to do next, you assume the leadership posture. You are the leader in the relationship. Okay. I need to get you some information so you can make an informed and educated decision on whether or not this is the right business model for you. So what I'm doing at that point is I'm not being a salesperson. I'm telling them, I want them to make an informed and educated decision. We're going to do what's in their best interest, not what's in my best interest. Okay. So um, that's the psychology. Now at this point, what you can do is you can tell them, Hey, listen, I need you to grab a pen. 
and you're going to give them a website or you may three-way them into a recorded call. You may have them pull up your website right then. You may book them to a webinar presentation where maybe you've got, you know, an upline or, you know, a leader who's going to give a presentation on a webinar, you know, and you book the appointment. So one of the keys, one of the biggest keys, in fact, is to always schedule a specific time to follow up. If you're not immediately, you know, having them watch the presentation, you are setting a time. So you're saying, um, all right, I've got a website I need you to review. There's going to be a presentation on there. It's going to take 15 minutes. And I just need to know, you know, by when can you definitely have had that video watched in the next 24 hours? And you're setting a time. And so, you know, you basically, you're saying by when definitely, you know, by when for sure, by when definitely, you're setting that firm time. And so, that is how you would call not a hot lead, not someone that you, you know, a, a lead that you generated yourself. If it's a lead that you generated yourself, maybe it's on your website. I'm going to give you what I have found that works really well for me. And again, I've done a, a lot of self-generated leads. Um, this is, I can give you several different versions. I'm just going to give you what I have found the, that works the best. And so this is someone who they answered my ad directly. Um, they they went and they saw something on my website. They know it's me calling them back. So I'd say, hey, John, it's Matt Morris uh, giving you a call from Dallas here, getting back to you. You filled out the form on my website requesting information on my business. Is now a good time to talk? Okay, and he's going to say, yeah, it is. And so th this may sound odd what I say, but it's crazy how well it works. And I say, well, cool, excellent. Well, tell me this. How can I help you? <laughs> and what it does is... It, it really causes him to think and it's somewhat open-ended and sometimes they won't really know how to answer the question but if they know a little bit about your business model or you know you already have a little bit of authority with them then they're able to you know just say well you know here they can just open up and tell you what they're looking for you know how can I help you tell me what you're looking for how can I help you? Tell me what you're looking for. You know, it's real simple and you just leave it open-ended and let them talk, okay? Now, here's the key is you've got two ears and one mouth. The key to this whole thing is being a really good listener. Now, I'm not saying let them control the conversation. I'm not saying you let them talk for an hour or 30 minutes or even 10 minutes. Um, but I am saying you want to listen to their needs. You want to focus on their needs, okay? Now, here's another thing that you can do. If that doesn't, if you're not comfortable doing that, I find that it just puts me in a place of power. It puts me in a place of posture. Um, but you can go back to the script that we co covered last, you know, is now a good time to talk. Okay, perfect. Well, tell me about yourself. What kind of work do you do? How long have you been doing that? Are you married? Do you have kids? So tell me, what is it you're really looking for? What is it you're really looking for? Okay, and again, I'm just going to get them to open up. Now, if they've already seen a presentation, now you may have, a, if they haven't seen a presentation, you're going to go back and you're going to do exactly what I already explained to you to do. If they have seen the presentation, then you're just immediately going to go for the close. You're going to say, well, did you have a chance to watch the video? If they, They're going to say yes. Uh, when they say that, you say, great, tell me what you like best about it and just let them talk. Let them tell you what they liked. And once they tell you, you say, cool. Well, it sounds like to me you're ready to get started. Okay? You're, when you say that, again, you're pausing. Sounds to me like you're ready to get started. You're just immediately going for the close. It's like you're just assuming. And again, here is the whole thing. You are in control. You have the posture. Most people, when it comes to the closing process, the reason why they're bad at closing is because they keep selling long after they should be. And so it creates a situation in the prospect's mind where the prospect feels like they need to be a salesperson. And so you just immediately, sounds like, to me, you're ready to get started. Now, you can also say, you know, on a scale of one to 10, one, you have no interest, 10, you want to get started, where are you at? If they're a zero to four, you let them go. If they're a five, a six, a seven, an eight, uh, great. What questions can I answer for you? Um, you know, um, if they're a nine or a 10, just sign them up. <laughs> you know, you may have to answer a few questions, but just sign them up.
And that is what I have found to be an amazingly simple way to call leads back with power, with authority. And the key is this. Again, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. It's being familiar, it's having posture, it's having control at the same time building rapport with people. And realize if you are in the cold market, if you're calling leads, it is going to be a massive, massive numbers game. And so just be prepared and get excited because the skill set that you learn from calling hundreds and thousands of leads is going to make you better, a better network marketer in so many different areas because you really get to understand people when you just talk to that many. So hopefully this added a ton of value for you. Excited about hearing you on the next module. Thanks.